Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you to our today's webinar. My name is Peter Spengel, and with my colleague Pavel Vinarik, we will be presenting you today our news in Flowmon version 12. But before we start with this webinar, I would like to inform you that we will be recording the webinar and you will receive the recording of the webinar afterwards via email. And I would like to also encourage you to use the Q&A section within the Zoom meeting for your questions, which we will be answering after the webinar or at the end of the webinar. So what we will be talking today about after the short introduction, we will just would like to briefly introduce you Flowman and WhatsApp growth integration, including the online demonstration. Then we will focus on the main topic of this webinar, so Flowman 12 and its news, again, including the online demonstration, how it would look like and work in the Flowman. And at the end of the webinar, we would like to present you what are our priorities and plans for the near future. And at the end, we will be happy to answer your questions. Before I start, I would like to mention what you probably most of you already know. Flomon is part of the Progress family that we very recently acquired. And the Progress is the global software company which provides the products to develop, deploy, and manage high impact business applications. And I would like to ensure you that it has that this acquisition has no negative impact on Flowmon and Flowmon products. In contrary, we believe that very soon you will see a benefit for which are for our partners and customer coming through related to this situation that we are part of the progress family. And one of the first benefits, which I would like to just briefly introduce is, is the Flowmon and WhatsApp growth integration. When the WhatsApp growth is the product of the uh, product of the progress family, and it is the IT infrastructure monitoring tool, you basically provide the network status about any devices connected into your network and provide you the information basically about what's up, what's down. And of course, it can alert you in case of any network issues and proactively find and fix problem, help, help you to proactively find and fix problem fast. So it is a great complement what the Flowmon does. So combination of this IT infrastructure monitoring tool with the network traffic data monitoring is really useful and recommend it. And with the recent integration of these two products, it of course brings the joint benefits that you can see the data from Flowmon dashboards within the WhatsApp growth interface and to even faster diagnose traffic issues. And in case you need to go into more details, you can easily go to the Flowmon and do the detailed analysis of the network problem. And in the same vein, you can see also the Flowmon security events within the uh, WhatsApp world user interface. But I think that is better than the hundred of words is to the demonstration. So I would like to ask Pavel to demonstrate it online. Sorry. Hi everyone, welcome. So as Peter said, uh, we focused on joint benefits of having IT infrastructure monitoring and network performance monitoring and diagnostics under a single umbrella. And we developed integration that will help IT professionals, IT operation guys to assess and understand root cause of issues. Uh, basically, very, very quickly with integrated views showing what is happening on the network side and what is happening on the infrastructure or server side. So let me start with this uh, simple example. I do have a company application that 
is being used by a lot of users internally and it's running slow. As you can see, it's loading, it's loading and it takes time and users are complaining and you would like to understand and analyze root cause of the issue quickly. So I'll move on to my Flowmon appliance where I actually see the overall status of this my application. I understand that I have an issue with server response time. It shows me an alarm that the performance in terms of server response time is degraded. When I look at comparison for last 24 hours, this server response time metric is on the level of seven milliseconds. And for last one hour, it's actually getting, getting significantly higher, 128 milliseconds. And it's one hour average. So in reality, it's going to be much, much worse. Before I move to WhatsApp Gold to show the integrated view, I think it's just worth it to briefly show you the, the environment we're dealing with. So this is a lab environment that simulates the traditional enterprise application architecture. So I have a pair of real servers that are hosting my application. The application is actually delivered to clients through a load balancer that ensures high availability, additional level of security, and so on. But that's, that's not really important in, in this scenario. So it's just an endpoint that's provided by the load master to clients, and these clients actually simulate continuous user traffic towards the application. We will be focusing on the server side because this is something that you will most probably monitor in the IT infrastructure monitoring. So in WhatsApp Gold in our case. So let's move on to WhatsApp Gold integrated dashboard consolidating metrics gathered by WhatsApp Gold as such and gathered by Flowmon. So what I do have here is a specific dashboard for this my application that shows the overall network environment. And I see that since 9.40 AM this morning, I do have a significant throughput degradation and I have a significant increase of server response time, which is basically what we have seen in Flowmon. And this is the whole environment. Uh, so the whole application, all its components. When I move forward, and look at the application from the perspective of clients. So just really the traffic of the clients towards the load balancer. I understand what is the user experience they are actually getting and as well as other metrics, but we're focusing on the server response time. And now let's move on and look at individual servers that are delivering the application. So we'll immediately see where the problem is and how it correlates to performance metrics. From WhatsApp Gold, I understand what is the device utilization. So I gather memory utilization, disk utilization, and CPU utilization from those servers. So for server 24, I've actually experienced full CPU load, which pretty much correlates with the server response time that this particular server is actually providing when dealing with the, with the user requests. So that's how I correlate metrics from IT infrastructure monitoring with network performance monitoring. And I use WhatsApp Gold as a single pane of glass that consolidates all these metrics and give me an instant insight to understand why I do have a specific problem in my environment. So that's that's the first live demo, and I'm handing over back to Peter. Thank you, Pavel. And before I will continue with the presentation of the news in Flomo. I would like to just briefly remind the Flowmon solution architecture because there is a quite a lot of people join who are not so familiar with Flowmon. So just briefly, 
Flowmon or center point of the Flowmon uh, architecture is the Flowmon collector hardware virtual or cloud appliance, which collects the data through the whole network or whole environment and provide the visibility into the network traffic. It collects the information through the flow data protocols like NetFlow, IPC, SFlow or JFlow or any other flow basically. And we can collect or from a collector can collect it from the typical infrastructure devices like routers or switches, or it could be some special devices like uh, load balancer, for example, it's from the load master, which is also the part of the progress family. Or you can use our dedicated Flowmon probe, which can provide the flow data even enhanced about the additional information, typically from the layer seven. So the collector then provide the detailed network visibility and possibility, of course, for the reporting, troubleshooting, and to basically know about anything was happening within the network. And there are also available software modules for the collector, which extend the functionality. Flowmon anomaly detection system for the network detection and response. So for the sec basically security monitoring, which provides you the detections of uh, suspicious behavior, anomalies, or, or security sets. Flowmon packet investigator for on-demand full packet capture and analysis and the Flowmon APM for application performance monitoring. So with the Flowmon, you can have the unique visibility to your whole network environment and see the network issues immediately, detect the security incident or sets, use the built-in expert experience there, and of course, with all the reporting alerting functionality. But let's now focus primarily on the news within the Flow Mode 12, which were released within the beta in the beginning of March. And we plan to release the stable version in the beginning of May. And what are the highlights of, of this release? I'm proud to say here that with this release, the Flow Mode is now the most versatile monitoring tool for hybrid environment on the market because we added support for the Google Cloud flow logs and Azure NSG flow logs. So we now are covering our, and are able to monitor the three uh, most used public cloud environments. Another uh, group of improvements were focused on the improvement of workflows and user experience. We also redesigned the PDF reporting functionality and focus on the assessing quality of the flow data. And now let's deep dive a little bit into this topic. Why are even these flow logs important? The reason is that the most organization currently have hybrid networks and the network visibility is must for them through these all uh, networks. So, it doesn't matter if it is on-premise infrastructure, private cloud or public cloud, because basically what you cannot see, you cannot control. And the traditional approach by, for example, deploying probe is not ideal for public clouds environment because it's very expensive. And these flow logs help to balancing the cost with the reasonable level of the visibility into the network there. So what in fact the flow logs are, it is some form of the network telemetry, which is natively available in the public cloud environment. For you who, who are familiar with the NetFlow and IPFIX protocols, the level of provided detail is very similar to NetFlow version five. And once you configure these flow logs in the public cloud environment, then Flowmon can collect or Flowmon collector can collect these flow logs and provide the visibility into this flow cloud traffic. So provide you the same visibility like to, for example, on-premise network infrastructure. 
and you can do so across multiple cloud providers so you can have in one collector visibility into multiple cloud providers on-premise network or private cloud networks and if we go into more details in the specific uh, cloud environments i will start with the google cloud and its vpc flow logs so in the google cloud you can enable flow logs to any subnet of the vpc networks and these flow logs are then aggregated and flowmon collector is accessing the data in the real time by the subscribing to the pub sub so the only thing which you need to configure in the flow mode is to provide the detail about the subscription, which you can see here, and it's all and then the flow mode works with this in the similar way like with any other flow data flow data sources, so you can have the same visibility and work with, with it same within the flow mode collector, which could be, of course, deployed on premise or in the cloud and it works very similarly with the azure and its nsg flow logs when in the azure there is there are subnets managed via nsg network security group which is basically a list of security rules that allow or deny network communication and the result of these evaluation is the NSG flow logs. And these flow logs can be stored to uh, blob, blob storage. And again, flow mode collector can access the data through this blob storage. So from the flow mode collector configuration perspective, you just need to provide the subscription ID and blob storage URL and that's all. And you start again receiving or having the data within the Flowmon collector and work with this like with any other traditional NetFlow or IP fix, IP fix data and have it in the same, same tool, same solution. And now I would like to again ask Pavel to demonstrate it live. Yes, sure. Thanks, Peter. So you're looking at a Flowmon collector that is gathering flow data from multiple different sources. First one is the traditional on-prem built-in Flowmon probe that is monitoring traffic, let's say, in a data center. Then we have another flow source uh, coming from Google Cloud. So it's a uh, Google Cloud VPC flow logs. And that's the news of uh, Flowmon 12.0 release. And then we are showing also at the same time collection of AWS VPC flow logs. This is not a new feature of Flowmon 12. It's this capability is in the product for some time already. But what I want to demonstrate is really the readiness for multi cloud deployment strategies where you can monitor all the different environments that you have in your company in a single tool, consolidate all the traffic and get, I would say, a standard view into all the different network types. So let me, let me just uh, drill down. I'll now move to analysis. So as, as you can see, I can do pretty much a, everything with the data as you are used to with Flowmon. So when I select the time frame and I go down to let's let's do top 10 IP conversations and let's add here flow source IP address so flow source identification. When I run the query, I got those top 10 <laughs> where you can see that it shows the origin of that specific traffic so you have 
one normalized database of all the flow data, no matter from which flow source they are coming. And you can query them all, or you can just select a specific specific flow source that you would like to query. And for for you who are familiar with Flowmon, it's already obvious to you that you can do reporting, dashboarding, alerting, everything as you are used to. All the flow sources, including cloud flow sources, are listed in a standard way uh, among all the others where we uh, gather information from cloud native APIs to be able to auto detect, name and recognize the flow source. So we understand the, the, the project, we understand the specific VPC subnet, and we automatically configure the flow source and label interfaces and label the flow source as such properly. And that's that's pretty much it. Back to Peter. Yeah, thank you. Give me just a moment to continue sharing. Thank you, Pavel. Flow quality analyzer. It is the command line tool, which is now part of any Flowmon collector. And the intent of this tool is the provide the expert users or and impl our implementation partners possibility to analyze and review quality of the flow data coming to the flow collector. And the motivation for it is to, of course, prevent the inaccurate monitoring or detections because of the issues with quality of the receiving flow data. So this tool is looking for specific and let's say typical issues which can be in the flow data, such as missing some important attributes, inaccuracy of timestamp, duplicate flows, wrong timeout settings, or something like that. So it could help with the quality of the monitoring. Another group of the improvements were focused on the workflow and UX. And I would like to use this opportunity to thank you all for your feedback and suggestions we are receiving for improvements, because quite a lot of these, what we will be presenting now, is based on your suggestions and improvements. And we know that Flowmon should help you, helping you to solve and analyze problem quickly. So we need to focusing on this, on this and the user experience. On this slide, you can see the in which part primarily where these workflow and user experience improved. So it was in the dashboard, reports, application performance monitoring widgets, and in the topology maps. And I will now briefly comment each of these groups. So regarding the dashboards and reports, there is now easy, just by one click possibility to dial down to the data from the dashboard or report chapter for the detailed analysis. So in the case, you need to better understand what is happening, what is hiding behind your uh, report chapter or on the dashboard, you can do it this. And in the similar way, you can easily copy the IP address or basically any text item uh, in, the, in the widget for the easy collaboration or, for example, looking in some third party tool or so. PDF reporting, we redesigned them completely. It focuses on the digital consumption primarily. So we introduced new layout for individual chapter. It focus on the content and readability of the, of the report itself to provide you the most important information and all relevant important information in the one place in the nice, let's say nice, nice way. APM and widgets and reporting from the application performance monitoring. We moved all these widgets and reports to the central dashboards and reports since the Flowmon APM 5, which is connected with this Flowmon 12. So you have everything there. And in the same time, we improved the 
widget names and the content to be more informative for you and easy to be understand what it really is showing. And the last but not least is the topology maps and improvements there. That at the moment topology map is and doing the it's editing doing in the real time, so it does not delay user anymore. And so you can work there with no interruptions and edit it anyhow easily. We also redesigned the link details to provide better insight into the bandwidth utilization data and information. And we also slightly change how we uh, are applying the user permissions now are applied on the individual topology map components, which in fact mean that the user can access the topology map map even if he does not have permissions to all use profiles within this topology but then he will see only the data which respect the user permission so he can access the topology map but he will see only what he can basically and now i would like to ask again pavel to demonstrate it okay so last live demo i'll i'll hope i I hope you can see my screen right better. Yep. And I hope I don't forget anything. So let's start with topology maps as it's here at hand. So Petr mentioned improved link detail. You can see it here, it's much more clean and easy to see individual directions. What is the bandwidth? What is the current utilization? how the utilization is calculated you have here your links to get directly to monitoring center to analyze the traffic and you have an overview of the traffic chart as well so this is the this is the uh, link detail now for drill down options so we moved the item previously called more info or more data from the from the settings we moved it as a magnifier directly on the on the widget headline and it's it's context sensitive so depending on where i uh, on which type of widget i actually click on the magnifier it behaves accordingly so it moves me to analysis in this case but when i when I go to a different type of widget like this top 10 host with, let's say, amount of transfer data, it depends what I want to do. Maybe I want to go to analysis and run the query immediately. Maybe I just want to open and configure the analysis in a way that I can adjust it and run the query afterwards. Or I may be interested in specific details of a specific item. So when I click on an IP address, I can actually say open in analysis and add to filter, which means that the analysis will be immediately pre-configured for the specific time frame, for the specific profile. And as you can see, the, the IP is here already as a filter so now i can say okay i'm interested in let's say top 10 ports according to amount of transfer data and i can run the query that will now analyze all this data for the last 24 hours and give me the result that i'm interested in so so that's uh, a summary of the drill down options same applies for for reports because reports are nothing else than just another way of representing the same data so the the drill down and magnifier is here and it works exactly in the same way when you want to manage report chapters previously you have to go to a specific module find a specific report chapter and do your adjustment that's no longer needed you can do all your operations directly from this uh, single user interface so if you want to create a new chapter you just simply do it if you want to edit existing report chapter you just say edit 
and it will automatically take you to the specific module, open the settings of that specific chapter, and you can do your adjustment. So that's how it how it simplifies the workflow. And also you can immediately understand where the data is coming from, if it's predefined, if you can do something with it or not. So predefined is simply predefined. You cannot change it and for custom, you can do your adjustments. Last thing I want to show you is how the PDF report now looks. So we did uh, a lot of changes to fit more content and to make the information more clear, more readable. So the, the traffic report now looks like this. Uh, this is pretty much standard yeah, for the topology. Again, we made it more, more clean, more readable and included the, the utilization on individual links. Uh, on this example, you can see how we fit a lot of information on a single page while still it's pretty readable. It's, it's, uh, it's easy to understand what is, what is displayed there. Then a change of top reports, top statistics. That's a different way of representing the data. So now the table on a single page can be much longer, hold more information and it will not span over multiple pages. Anyway, if you will have any feedback to share with us, if in, in your specific case, data in reports will be somehow uh, not represented properly, just get back to us, send us the sample and we'll take a look at it. Feedback will be highly appreciated. And that's it. So I'm passing back to Peter. So now we are getting to the last part of this webinar, which in a way we would like to present you the what are our priorities and plans for the near future. So here's the mandatory disclaimer and related the plans. The next series. We are working on is the flowmon 12.1, where we would like to focus, and we are already focusing on the resilience and stability of the distributed architecture, which is the flowmon uh, way of deployment, which is used by our largest customers. And we would like to provide them the better experience with this large deployment of the flowmon and to be able to easily support them. Another group of the improvements we are working on is related to the security. Security in the Flowmon solution itself, but also in the software delivery process too, because as we all know, the security is really important in nowadays world, and we need to continue, continuously and gradually working and improving it. Another thing we are working on it is the uh, possibility or the quality, let's say, how the Flowmon solution is able to logging with the target, of course, to be able to even better prov provide you and our customers better support in case of any issues within the Flowmon. And we are also revising the use hardware configurations within the Flowmon physical appliances to be able to provide even higher performance within these Flowmon hardware appliances. And if we look for the Flowmon 13, there should be the biggest change improvements related to the new collector backend engine, which will already have the native the AP fix support and it should bring multi, multiple time higher performance against the current architecture. And moreover, it will be much more flexible in the supporting of various IP fix item within the Flowmon collector and to be easily extended them. 
they are also working on the prediction and tending over the volumetric data and uh, network performance metrics because we understand that important are not only or is not only what is happening in the net, net network traffic now or in the past but it is also important to understand what will probably be happening in the network traffic in the future as an example could be some some prediction about the some link uh, saturation which could happen in the near future so with the rising of the of the bandwidth it could uh, in advance alert you administrators that there could be an issue in the near future so you should probably start to thinking or planning about the link up link up again and the last but not least is that we would like to improve the user documentation and why how we are how by how we are serving it to you because we also understand this that also the experience with these user documentation and a supportive material is very important and it is all from our prepared presentation so i would like to thank you all for your attention and now we have a time for your questions okay uh thank you pavel and peter uh i think these are really exciting news with flowmon uh, we have been uh, answering the questions in the Q&A section during the webinar, so uh, I'd like to take this opportunity and tell the attendees that uh, we have some time to spare, so you can take the opportunity and ask your questions directly. So if you click on the button uh, in your navigation menu to raise hand, uh, our panelists Peter and Pavel can then unmute you and we can have a direct discussion, but as well feel free to continue asking the questions via chat as well so um let's just kick it off with the questions we haven't answered yet uh the question here from piotr barkovsky here is how does implementation in cloud environment looks like licensing how to monitor selective vnets how to monitor express route traffic only can we share some documentation uh, the documentation on how to deploy Flowmon for specific cloud environments is part of the deployment guides. It covers not only private, like, you know, private cloud in terms of VMware, Hyper-V and so on, but it also covers instructions how to deploy into public cloud. Uh, monitoring selective VNets, that's, that's pretty, straightforward just for the vnets that you want you enable the flow logs feature and uh, in terms of licensing uh, basically flowmon collector is licensed uh, based on the disk capacity which if you have a you know a lot of flows per second you need to consider the size that it will occupy on the disk. You need to consider the history that you want to have in uh, terms of, you know, no aggregation in the data. So you can drill down to data. And that's the way how to define. I need one terabyte collector, six terabyte collector and choose the, the proper license how to monitor express route traffic only this this is more for a discussion with a sales engineer because it depends how it's implemented if you want to monitor it on the uh, data center side if you want to monitor it in the cloud i don't think there will be one fits all so this this is always a consultancy on the logical network topology to understand where you can get flow data from existing router switches, where you should deploy probes, and so on. Okay, thank you, Pavel. Uh, another question from Pavel Hradilek. Will you plan any new protocol for IoT and Ethernet IP-CIP modules? Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes, we, we have this in the, we have this in the, 
pipeline as well. Uh, we have implemented a couple of additional protocols for IoT or OT environment. Uh, then what we have now in the product and once we release Flowmon uh, 13 with the flows and collector backend, then we will plan to add these protocols because with, with the new collector engine, we will be super ready to do this quickly. So it will still take some time, but you can expect some more protocols like Modbus uh, that will be added into the like layer seven supported protocols. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And there is a follow-up question. Will you plan to add some more fields to ADS email alert as uh, autonomous system for source and destination IP or HTTP hostname? I'm not aware of any such item in the backlog. So feel free to submit a feature request. We still have the ideal portal running on uh, support at uh, camptechnologies.com where anyone from the user base or partner base can actually submit an idea for a feature he would like to see in the product. Okay, thank you, Pavel. And another question. Uh, hi, are there any plans to update NFD, uh, NF Dump Core? Better, will you take this one? Yeah, yeah, I will do so. Yeah, this is basically what we are planning to do within the Flowmon 13. So the change the engine, collector engine we are using based on the NF Dump NF Sen and to introduce the new one which will be focused on the, as I mentioned, the more to be more flexible, to be more prefer, performer and enable us to even adding new features to the collector much easier and faster for the future. So, so yes, it is planned for, and we believe it will be in the beginning of the next year. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Another question, will Flowmon be investing in the application response monitoring space? It's quite general question. It's difficult to answer that. I would say we're heavily investing into this already with the network performance metrics, server response time, round trip time, retransmission. So to distinguish network related issue with the application related issue, we have the APM module, we have APM transaction generator module. So we're already investing into the application monitoring space in general. So I, I would probably need to get more specific question to answer because that's, that's uh, quite general. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Pavel. And, and then we have two more questions. So one of them is what applications and protocols are planned to be supported via APM? Uh, we do not plan to extend it in the short time. At the moment, our plan with the APM is to make it primarily as a first step to make it integral part of the Flowmon collector itself to have the native integration there. And then we will start probably thinking about the extension to some specific applications or protocols. Excellent, thank you, Peter. And last questions here is, do you plan to add more fields saved, saved from routing protocols, BGP, OSPF, ATC? At this point, we don't. Oh. Frankly speaking, we do not meet or see this requirement much from our traditional customer base. So I would encourage uh, you here to submit the feature request or idea in the, in the portal and being as much specific as possible. So really explaining the use case and saying which specific information you're interested in and why so we can consider it for the for the future roadmap. And with the Flowmon collector and new collector engine, this should be much easier for us to be done. So at the moment it will make sense. Yeah, it 
probably will be there in the near future. At, at this point, the coverage is on standard uh, flow items defined by the standard exported in, in NetFlow or IPFIX, so originating or destination AS, previous next AS, to this, this standard BGP related information that's, that's supported for years. Excellent. Uh, I see we have a raised hand from uh, Peruligri Besena. I hope I don't butcher your name. So I'm just un going to unmute you now and you can ask your question. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good morning, Pierluigi speaking. Okay, just to, to, to complete my question before concerning the application uh, uh, response monitoring space. Uh, what I mean is that sometimes we, okay, of course, Flomon is uh, recognized as a leader uh, for the uh, anomaly detection and so on, but sometimes we are, uh, let's say, uh, facing customers that uh, have uh, maybe not a specific need only for uh, uh, detecting and, uh, uh, let's say, understanding when there is an issue, if the issue is related to the network rather to the uh, the servers and so on. So what I mean is, uh, are you also, let's say, trying to compete in this space uh, with companies like, such as, I don't know, Riverbed with app response or tools like that? So to, 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 recognize, to be recognized also as a leader in this space? Or... Uh, that's, that's a tough question because in, in many cases, we're actually competing with companies like Riverbed or Netscout because many customers, while of course there is a lot of features, a lot of product capabilities, they are not using all the product capabilities that Riverbed or Netscout offers. They tend to seek for, I would say, more easy to use solution and more scalable for deployment, price also matters. So I'm aware of multiple cases where we won over these competitors because we just provide better fit for the specific customer. Of course, we cannot replace all the functionality because app response goes deeper in terms of application performance monitoring, no discussion about that but it really depends what is the fit for the customer. And we, we don't really have an intention to be like head to head, one to one uh, competing comparison to Netscout or Riverbed. We want to go our own way, flow monitoring, enriched with additional metadata, everything as much lightweight as possible and, uh, you know, easy to use for the customers. So don't expect us chasing Riverbed or Netscout on feature parity. Okay, thanks. Uh, all, of course, if you have uh, some documentation that you can share con concerning this kind of situation where you manage to replace a uh, solution like uh, Riverbed or uh, uh, other competitor in this space would be interesting to, to, to know. Noted, we'll, we'll get back to you. Uh, sometimes it's it's replaced, sometimes it's actually augment. So I, I know a customer case where they are still using Netscout for the core of the data center for the top critical applications, but for the rest of the environment, for the whole large enterprise environment, they are actually using Flowmon. So in in some cases, it's, it's about a combination of proper tools for proper use case. Okay, got it. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, and I just want to take a pause here and remind everyone of our attendees that uh, next week there will be a webinar focused specifically on the news in Flowmon ADS 12. So I just posted the link to register to this webinar in the, uh, in the chat. So feel free to register. And uh, we have another question. Uh, in the q a section and uh it just disappeared. yeah i just i just answered that i've provided the link to rest api documentation and uh, there is also a mip file on the support side so depends on how you would like to 
monitor flow more you can leverage existing rest api you can leverage uh, the flowmon mip file to monitor flowmon specific uh, process status and, and the general status of the appliance. And by the way, WhatsApp Gold does this out of the box. Excellent. Thank you, Pavel. You are very quick. <laughs> Quicker than me. Yeah, just to refresh, the question was is there are any plans to release documentation for API? So Pavel just provided that. Uh, thank you. So uh, it looks like we don't have any other question. I just want to take the opportunity, uh, give the opportunity to the attendees one more time to raise hand and ask any questions they might have directly. Let's give it a second. Uh, and it looks like we have covered everything. Hopefully. Okay. Uh, I guess this is the time to close the webinar. Uh, as stated in the beginning, there will be a recording sent to your emails after this webinar is finished. So you may go through all the information we shared with you again, as you wish. Uh, thank you, Pavel, and thank you, Peter. I think this has been a really great experience and really good to hear that there has been a continuous work and great, great improvement in the Flowman solution. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.